Hi everyone, welcome back to the History of Football channel. Today I'll be ranking 2023-24 Premier League home shirts. The Premier League will be starting this week, very exciting, great to have it back. And I'm going to be ranking each Premier League club and their home shirt. For this list I'm going to start in alphabetical order. I recently did the Championship home kits, but tonight I'm going to be doing the Premier League home shirts of every club. And we start with AFC Bournemouth. With their shirt this year, for me it's a typical Bournemouth kit. It looks nice and smart. I like the fact that they're not trying to do anything too out there. It's just a simple looking kit. I think even the sponsor itself on the front, I don't mind that. Um, I mean with Bournemouth they don't really change up their kits too much. I really like this one so I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 for their home shirt. With Arsenal, the runners up from last year, they've kept things quite traditional as well. Emirates is still the sponsor on the front, as it has been for many years. This year, they decided to go for a bit of gold on the kit, especially on the shoulders, sleeves, the badge, and that type of thing. With their kit, I think it's pretty good for a home shirt, for an Arsenal home shirt. I, I think it's quite good. So I'll give the, the Arsenal home shirt an 8 out of 10. This is Aston Villa's home shirt. It's claret and blue as it always is, but the badge is different. They've got a new badge. I'm not particularly a fan of the new one. I prefer the old one. They've got a new sponsor as well. Apparently, this one is a controversial sponsor. A few people are not happy with it. Uh, let me know in the comment section below if you know why it's controversial. This share as well, uh, the blue extends up to the top of the shoulders there. Usually, it's just on the sleeve area. Um, I don't think it's the worst kit in the world. I think um, I prefer last year's a bit better. So I'll give this Aston Villa shirt a 7 out of 10. It's not horrible, but I think last year's kit was a bit better. And now we move on to Brentford. With their shirt this year, the sponsor remains the same. However, they've incorporated a bit of a black on the sleeves there, which I don't particularly like. And also down the bottom, the, the red fades into a black stripe. Uh, I don't think that this kit is as good as last year's. I wouldn't say it's horrible, but I think that Brentford can do a lot better than this. So I'll give this kit a 5 out of 10. I'm not particularly a fan of Brentford's shirt for this year. And this is Brighton and Hove Albion's shirt for this year. I really like this shirt. Um, last year they went for a, a shirt that just had one solid blue bar that went down the middle with a couple of gold yellowish pinstripes and had a bit of yellow on the sleeves and that. This year it's a return to just the, the standard blue and white stripes. Um, very traditional look from Brighton and Hove Alwyn this year. And I've got no issue with the sponsor as well. I know some people have commented and said that they don't like that the stripes stop and then the American Express is there. But I like it myself personally. For this Brighton and Hove Albion shirt, I think it's really good. I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10. I think that Brighton have done a good job with their home kit for this shirt. And the newly promoted Burnley are next. With their shirt this year, um, they've gone back to a very traditional look. Last year, they went for this weird, glitchy sort of camo look to the front of their shirt. This year, it's very traditional, uh, simple. I like the collar. Um, they've got a new sponsor. This year, they're sponsored by W88, who they've sponsored Wolverhampton Wanderers in the past. I think this is a really good shirt from Burnley. If I was to give it a rating, I'd give it an 8 out of 10. I think it's a solid home shirt. And if I were a Burnley supporter, I would buy one. So 8 out of 10 for me for Burnley's shirt. And this is Chelsea's home shirt for this year. Um, with this one, they're going for a retro look. They've got a reflective badge on the front. There's no sponsor as of yet. They've got a bit of white on the sleeves there, which I think a lot of teams are doing this year. They're, they're adding a bit of colour to the sleeve area. If... <sighs> I really don't like this shirt at all. I, I don't like it. It looks kind of plain. looks a bit ugly to me. Um, it's not really something that I would go out and buy. And for me, it looks cheap. I mean, Chelsea, they got all the money in the world and they churn out a kit like this. I think it's very disappointing. If I were a Chelsea supporter, I would be very disappointed. So I'm going to give this shirt a 3 out of 10. And this is Crystal Palace's home shirt for this year. This year, they're going for a half and half look. Half red, half blue. What I like about this kit is that they've um, emblazoned in the design the Crystal Palace building itself. I really like that they've um, acknowledged that part of their history and they've incorporated it on the shirt. Um, i got no issue with the sponsor. I think it's okay. Um, if I were a Crystal Palace supporter, I'd probably buy 
this shirt. Um, I wouldn't say that it's the best Crystal Palace kit I've ever seen. I've, I've liked all the ones they've done in the past. But I'll give it um, a 7 out of 10. I think it's a solid home shirt for this year. And now we move on to Everton's home shirt. I might be a bit biased here because I am a Nevertonian. But uh, this shirt is way better than the one that we had last year. I really like the collar. I like the detail around the sleeves and the collar. It's a nod back to Archibald Leach, who was one of the designers of Goodison Park. Um, everything else about it's fine, except the sponsor, Steak.com. But there's now that we can do about that. We just have to roll with it at the moment. But besides that, it's a solid home shirt. I'll be definitely buying one this year. So I'll give this one an 8.5, 9 out of 10. I think this is one of the better evidence shirts that we've had in the last few years. And this is Fulham's home shirt for this year. This season, they're going for a bit of a, a two-tone look up the top of the shoulders there, half white and half red. And they've got a bit of black on the sleeves. Normally, those are white. Also, they got a new sponsor. I think last year, they were sponsored by W88. This year, they're sponsored by SBO Top, who uh, used to sponsor Leeds United. Uh, this kit, I think it's decent. I think it's all right for a Fulham shirt. Um, this is one of the most expensive kits in the league to buy, though. I think I saw it at retail at 80 quid, which is a lot of money for a Fulham shirt, but it's decent. I'll give this one a 7.5 out of 10. If I was a Fulham fan, I would buy this kit. And this is Liverpool's home shirt for this year. Once again, they're sponsored by Standard Chartered. Um, it's just a typical Liverpool shirt, to be fair. Like They're not really doing anything different. They've got wide around the sleeves, wide around the collar. It's just a classical Liverpool shirt, so um, I'll give this one an 8 out of 10. I think it's uh, a nice looking shirt and uh, they rarely change things up, so it's just a standard Liverpool shirt to me. And this is Luton Town's new shirt that they'll be wearing this year in their first season back in the top flight for quite a long time. Um, and it's pretty disappointing, I think. Uh, I wasn't a fan of their kit last year, this year. Um, it's predominantly orange again with a white stripe going down one side, which kind of reminds me of what Paris Saint-Germain do sometimes with their shirt. I think Luton Town could have done a bit better, especially when this is their first year back in the top flight. Um, I'm, not, I'm not seeing it's the worst kit on the list, but um, I'd be disappointed if I were a Luton Town supporter, so I'll give it a 5 out of 10. And this is Manchester City's home shirt. The defending Premier League champions and the UEFA Champions League winners. I think this year Manchester City have done good on this kit. Last year I wasn't really a fan of how they put the badge in the middle. I'm not really a fan of when clubs put the, the badge in the middle. I like it to be on the left hand side. They've also gone for this kind of design with a bit of a, a gradient going down the, the middle and on the front of the shirt. Um, I also like the collar as well. I think this is a solid Manchester City home shirt. Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of the fans really like it as well. I'm going to give this one 8.5 out of 10. I think it's a nice Manchester City home shirt. And this is Manchester United's home shirt for 2023-24. With this one, uh, they go, they're going for a bit of black on the top there. And they've got a black collar. Um, team viewers, the sponsor. I think it's a, a nice looking Manchester United shirt. Um, I think that it's pretty traditional looking for Manchester United I think it's solid I'll give this one eight and a half out of ten I think Manchester United has done a good job this year with their home kit and this is what Newcastle United will be wearing this year and with Newcastle United they rarely change up their kit it's generally pretty much the same and um, this year the only real difference that I can notice is that they got a new sponsor and I actually prefer this sponsor to the ones that they've had in the past in the past I think they've had fun 88 and they've had a couple of other uh, gambling companies. They had that Wonga on there, I think, was another one that they had. I like the way that the sponsor fits on the kit. I like the collar. I think it's a solid Newcastle home shirt. I'll give this one an eight and a half out of ten. I think it's a really nice Newcastle home shirt that they'll be wearing this year. And this is what Nottingham Forest will be wearing in 2023-24. Uh, with this one, they're another club that doesn't have a sponsor on the front yet. I think last year they had a... A time where they didn't have a sponsor on the front of their kit. Uh, with this one, it's it's quite plain. I mean, it's got a bit of white on the top there. It looks a bit retro, to be fair. Um, looks like a, a Nottingham Forest shirt that they wore back in the 1970s. I think it's a decent home shirt. It'll be interesting to see 
if they do get a sponsor, what type of sponsor they get, and that might impact how the shirt looks. But overall, at the moment, it looks quite clean. I think it's an okay home kit, so I'll give this one a 7 out of 10. And another promoted side of the share, Sheffield United. This is their home kit. Um, once again, Sheffield United is another club that barely change up their home shirts. This one doesn't have a sponsor yet, but I don't mind the colour and I don't mind what they've done at the bottom of the sleeves there. I did see a, a shirt that was advertised and it had Radox or something as the, the front of the sponsor, but I was told by a Sheffield United supporter that that was only a limited release kit. Like with Forest, it'll be interesting to see if they do get a sponsor, what's the sponsor going to look like on the front and how's that going to impact the shirt. But I think it's an okay um, home kit. I'll give it a 7 out of 10 for Sheffield United. And this is the Tottenham Hotspur shirt for this year. Um, they got the same sponsor as they did last year, I believe. Um, there's been a lot of criticism at the club for the fact that this kit looks pretty much the same as last year's and it's quite plain in design. And for what they're charging, uh, if I was a Tottenham Hotspur supporter, I wouldn't buy the shares kit. I'd just keep the old one. I think, you know, for Tottenham Hotspur, though, it's uh, it's okay. Tottenham Hotspur is a club that um, I normally associate with changing their kits up quite a bit. Um, some years they'll have like a sash, some years they'll have some other designs. But uh, this year they've gone for a very plain, basic design. Um, for this one, I'll give it a 6 out of 10. It's, it's now special and if you've got the kit from last year, just stay with that one. Don't bother buying this one because I think they're charging about £80 or something like that. This is West Ham shirt, the UEFA conference winners from last year. Uh, with this one, if you notice on the front, they've got a bit of these weird sort of squiggly lines. If you're looking close, they're meant to be bubbles, I think. And uh, this year, they fixed the sleeves. Uh, last season, they had these, these weird kind of sleeves going on there, but now they're back to the normal sleeves that they normally have with this claret and bl blue shirt. Bet we remain as the sponsor for this season. Um, I think this is a solid West Ham home shirt. If I were a West Ham supporter, I'd buy it. Um, I'll give it a 7.5, 8 out of 10. I think it's a decent home shirt this year for West Ham. And last on the list is Wolverhampton Wanderers, a.k.a. Wolves. Um, this year, once again, they're just going for a very traditional design. Wolverhampton Wanderers are not really a club I associate with changing their kit too much. They generally wear the same thing. I really like the collar and I like the sleeves. Uh, the sponsor fits great on this kit. Um, I think Castori has done a good job with this shirt. And I like how the, the, the badge fits in with the shirt as well. So I'm really impressed with Wolverhampton Wanderers shirt this year. I'll give it a 9 out of 10. I think it looks really good. And um, if I were a Wolverhampton Wanderers supporter, I'd definitely be buying one. So that concludes my video on rating slash ranking 2023 Premier League home shirts. I think most clubs did a good job this year with their shirt designs. The clubs that I think um, were the worst out of the ones I reviewed. I think Chelsea's got the worst kit this year. I'm not a fan of Brentford's and I'm not really a fan of Tottenham Hotspur or Luton Town shirt either. But let me know in the comment section below who's got the best kit this year, who's got the worst kit. I'd like to know your opinions on the shirts this year. Once again, this has been History of Football. Thanks for tuning in for my video and I'll catch us all later in the next one. All right, ta for now.